Hi, my name is Christine Zananti. My husband and I pastor Victory Church in Sharon, Massachusetts. Victory Church exists to show people the love of Christ and to connect them to Him. Thank you for tuning in to our teaching this morning. Our prayer is that these teachings will help you in your walk with God and to grow in Him. And if you're interested in seeing more of these videos, please visit our website that is listed below. God bless you and have a great day. Yeah when you hear my message this morning. We've been working through a message series on the songs of Christmas. And last week, Pastor Lou, he spoke on Mary. He spoke about Mary's song and he explained how her humility leads us to Christ. You know, having humility draws us to the Father. This week, we're gonna talk about the song of Zechariah and how God fulfills his promises. There's a story of a couple, a, a young couple, they went out uh, on a date and after an evening, the parents come back to find their children asleep. The babysitter had somehow miraculously got the kids to sleep. Now, how many of you parents know that's a hallelujah, thank God. <laughs> You'll hire that babysitter again, I promise you. That's golden and they were pleasantly surprised to find all of their children fast asleep and when the sitter had been paid and as she was walking out the door, all of a sudden she forgot to communicate this one important detail. She looked at the parents and says, oops, uh, I forgot. Um, I told Sammy that uh, to stay in bed because if he does in the morning, you're gonna get him a pony. <laughs> yeah, that babysitter will be fired real quick. Because how many of your parents know that you never make a promise that you can't keep, right? You just don't do that. Parents learned that a long time ago. But today we're gonna discover that God keeps all of his promises, all of his promises. In fact, Zachariah's song proclaims a vision of a God who never forgot his people, never forgot his people. Do you realize today that we have a Lord who will never forget you? He'll never forget you. Last week, Pastor Lou touched on Zachariah and Elizabeth's situation, that they were older in their years. Actually, the Bible says they were very old, and they had never had a child, but that God gave them their one and only son. He told them, you're going to have a son. And Zachariah, as you saw in the video, he questioned this. And he said, how can this even happen? Look how old we are. Like, this isn't, this isn't possible. It's not going to happen. And because of his unbelief, the Bible says that the Lord muted him. He couldn't speak all through the pregnancy. The first thing that we learn from this story is that God's promises will stretch our faith. They're gonna stretch your faith. Now their entire community is watching this unfold. Imagine your 85 year old neighbor gets pregnant. Imagine that. <laughs> and then her husband is miraculously unable to talk through the entire pregnancy. Trust me, the whole community was watching this miraculous event unfold in front of them and there was tremendous curiosity see people's faith were stretched to to imagine or believe that god could actually perform this miracle here in luke chapter one we see that the baby is finally born they name him john because that's what the angel told him we're going to name him john and when Zechariah is writing on a tablet the baby's name, that this is what the baby's name will be, his speech miraculously returns to him. Let's look at Luke chapter 1, verse 63. It says, he, Zechariah, asked for a writing tablet. And to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, his name is John. Why were they astonished? Well, if you were unable to have children your whole life and all of a sudden you're given a son, what are you gonna name them? 
after yourself, right? <laughs> they thought he's going to be Zachariah. No, they were astonished. His name is John. Immediately, his mouth was opened and his tongue set free and he began to speak, praising God. All the neighbors were filled with awe throughout the hill country of Judea. People were talking all about these things. Everyone who heard this wondered about it, asking, what then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. Everyone was amazed. Wouldn't you be if that happened in your neighborhood? God was establishing something special here, something world-changing and something profound. Here, Zechariah can finally speak after nine months. And this is what he says, verse 67. His father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago salvation from our enemies and from the hands of all who hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant the oath he swore to our father abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days now i want you to imagine this for nine months you are unable to communicate. What would be one of the first things that you would say when you open your mouth? Pastor Lou would say, Chinese, please. <laughs> Chinese food. Mine would be, I don't know. I want to take a nap, probably. What would be one of the first things that you would say when you open your mouth? Imagine for nine months, you couldn't ask for anything. You couldn't tell people your thoughts. You couldn't share your heart with anybody. You couldn't share your opinions. Some of us, that would probably be a good thing. <laughs> you know, you couldn't share your requests. You couldn't have social interactions or communicate with people in the regular way. You've been suppressed for nine months. And now I can talk, thank you, Lord. But Zachariah, after nine months, full of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says he bursts forth with praise. But he not only praises God, but he specifically praises him about all the promises that he has kept. What promises is he talking about? Well, verse 69, he says, God has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago. See, this horn of salvation is Messiah. He has finally come. He has finally come. Now you have to understand how profound this is. You saw it on the video there. For 400 years between the Old Testament and the New Testament, they're called the years of silence because God wasn't talking anymore. There were no prophets, there were no preachers, there were no people with new revelations from God. He was literally silent for 400 years. God was still at work in those days. He was doing other things, but the people were left to themselves with no new revelation. And here Zechariah proclaims, God has broken his silence. God has broken his silence. He has raised up a horn. Now that word horn there is very specific. The idea of horn is it implies power. It implies the ability to overcome an enemy. He also says that this is a fulfilled promise that the prophets from long ago spoke about. Zechariah here is seeing the past and the present very clearly. Zechariah quotes more fulfilled promises that God made to Abraham in verse 72. He says to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham. See, this is a powerful reminder, folks, 
that God never forgets his promises to us, never. It has been 2,000 years from the time Zechariah spoke that to when Abraham was promised that his seed would fill the earth and that a Messiah would come forth from it. 2,000 years. And it's been 900 years from the time Zechariah spoke that before when David was promised that he would have a Messiah come through his line. Now, how many of you have been waiting on God for something in your life? Maybe you've been waiting on a promise. How many of you have been waiting for a prayer to be answered, for a relationship to restore, to be restored, for your body to be healed? We wait on the Lord. But I promise you, none of you have been waiting 900 years. <laughs> I promise you, you haven't been waiting 2,000 years. This is how profound this is, that after all of this time, God is finally answered. God's promises stretch our faith. And another thing it does is waiting for the promises of God produces fruit in our own life, in our own life. See, Zechariah saw prophecy being fulfilled before his eyes. He was unable to speak. But Zechariah, in his silence, received a huge revelation, a huge revelation. For nine months, God was doing a deep work in his own heart. He could only listen and not speak. Did you know that the art of listening is a powerful tool to transform your understanding of the world around you? If we would do a lot more listening rather than speaking, we'd have peace on this earth. We'd have peace in our homes. We'd have peace in our communities. Listening is a powerful tool. Don't you wonder why did God choose muteness as a discipline for Zachariah, you know why? He didn't want that negative doubting to be spread to anybody else. <laughs> he said, I'm gonna do something powerful here and you're not gonna be able to talk negatively about it to anybody. So we're just gonna close your mouth right now. <laughs> Don't you wish you had the ability to do that? <laughs> to yourself probably. He wanted to teach him something, but he couldn't teach him something with all of Zachariah's questions and not only his questions but his answers his own answers to all everything that was happening to him see before this pregnancy Zachariah was questioning God but after this experience he clearly understands the plan of God this experience has changed him as a priest it's changed him it's the same way in our life in your life and in my life See, in silence, we're pregnant with the promises of God. God has told us things. God has spoke things to our heart. We read things in his scripture that we take and we say, that's mine. I know that God wants to do that. But when they are revealed, they come forth for everyone to see. Everyone sees it. There may be times in your life and your walk with God when you seem, he seems distant from you. He seems far away, like he's not talking to you, like he's not communicating with you. He hasn't answered you. There's certain prayers that you have asked for that he's told you to wait or he seems far away from. I want to encourage you to quiet yourself and stop talking. Quiet yourself. Start listening to the Holy Spirit. What is God doing in my life through this waiting process? What is he doing in me? Psalm 46 verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. Be still. How about 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 says, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by who? By us to the glory of God we can attest that his promises are true. You can trust God this morning. You can trust him. You can trust him to be faithful and true to what his scripture says. You can't say that about many other things in this world, can you? But you can trust God. You can trust his word that we can put absolute confidence in our Lord today. 
Now after nine months, Zachariah was closer to God than ever before. First, he praises God, he gives him the glory. He prophesies or he speaks of the promises that have been fulfilled. Then he prophesies about his own child, John. He says in Luke chapter one, verse 76, and you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he lived in the wilderness until he prepared, appeared publicly to Israel. Those 400 years of silence gave birth to a new beginning, a new chapter of what God was doing on the earth. See, prophecy had long ceased, but now with John, it had been revived. Can you imagine being the father of such a son? All those years of mourning, all those years of being scorned by your neighbors, oh, you can't have children, of grieving in your own heart, I can't have a child. And here you are, the father of such a son that will prepare the way for Messiah. Wow, let me tell you, when God fulfills his promises, they are powerful, they are tremendous. He exceeds our expectation, amen? You think one thing, but God has another plan that will exceed what you thought. It's greater, it's higher than what you ever thought. Both Jesus and John had unique and supernatural births, extraordinary lives, and they left an unprecedented impact on our world. I want to encourage you today. God never forgets his people. He won't forget you. A friend tells of overhearing two little girls and they were playing out in the yard and they were playmates and they played often together. They were counting their pennies, okay? And the first little girl said, I have five pennies. And the second, the second friend, she says, oh, I have, I have 10. And the first little friend says, wait, you don't have 10, I see five. One, two, three, four, five. And, and the little girl said, well, my father told me when he comes home tonight, he's given me five more. So I have 10 pennies. Well, don't you know that child's faith gave her proof of that which she did not see yet. And you know why? She counted it as hers already. Why? Because it was promised by the Father. It was promised by the Father, and it was as good as hers. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask the worship team to come back up. We're going to close in a song today, but I want to encourage you. You know, in the Word of God, there are over 8,800 promises in that Bible you hold. 8,800. One of those is for you, I promise you. <laughs> Many more than one of them. The greatest of these promises to me is the gift of eternal life. It's the gift of eternal life, the promise, the assurance that if we come before the Father, if we come before him and we confess our sin, that Christ will cleanse us and fill us and change us. I've been a pastor for a long time, about 30 years, and I've seen people healed. I've seen families restored. I've seen tremendous, just tremendous blessings from God. But to this day, to me, the greatest miracle is a changed heart. It's a changed heart. Nobody can change your heart but Jesus. He's the only one that can dig in there. He can do what no man can do. And that's a promise, the Bible says, that if we, if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, that if we believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's a promise that we can rely on today. The greatest miracle is a changed heart. Why don't we stand together this morning?
thank you, Father. We worship you today. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes for a moment, and just focus on what God has been talking to us this morning. What is God speaking to you? Can you hear his voice today? Can you hear him as he's speaking, as he's talking? What is he saying to you today? For some in this room, he's saying, you need to come to me. You truly haven't surrendered your heart to me, but today's your day. Today's your day. I want to save you. I want to fill you. I want to give you a fresh, brand new start that only comes from him. Others of you in this room, you've been praying for something from a really long time. And God is saying, do not give up. Do not let it go. Believe me. Believe me for your kids. Believe me for your finances. Believe me for your healing. Believe me for whatever need is in your heart today. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And in this season of waiting, I'm working something in your own life. I'm doing something deeper in you. Father, we come before you today, Lord. We humble ourselves. We thank you that you love us enough to draw us in, to draw us close to you. Father, we thank you for, for your gift of salvation that is free to anyone who asks. I pray for those in this room who are struggling in their hearts to surrender to you. I ask that today would be the day that they just give in. They say, Lord, whatever you have for me, I may not understand it all. I may not really know all the Bible or understand all this Jesus things, but I know that it's real, that something is in my heart today drawing me to the cross, drawing me to this gift of salvation, and I want it. I pray for them today that they will yield to that. They will accept you into their heart. I pray for those this morning who are having a hard time, who are struggling with their faith, who maybe like Zachariah are doubting or even feel like giving up on your promises. I pray that you will strengthen them in their faith. Help them to listen. Help them to close their own mouths, Lord. Help them to open their ears, open their eyes to what the Holy Spirit is saying and be encouraged today to continue to move forward, to press on in you, because you have great, powerful fruit that you want to come forth out of their lives that everyone will see and glorify you. We thank you today, Lord. We give you the praise. Thank you for watching this teaching today. We pray that it, it touched your life and helped you grow in the Lord today. Visit us again sometime.